The 40s were a dangerous time to be a Jewish person, especially in Europe. The rise of the Nazi party in Germany, a country with a relatively high Ashkenazi Jewish population, led to what we now know as the Holocaust, the largest recorded genocide by death count. The Warsaw Ghetto Uprising was a monumental attempt by a great brave group of Jews to break the barriers physically built by and that were imposed on them by Nazis that changed the course of World War II and the lives of the Jewish people for decades to come. Jews in the ghettos of Warsaw, a Polish city, had organized a series of protests against the barriers put on them by the Nazi-controlled government. The German forces quelled a large group of resistors in the Polish or Jewish ghettos. They significantly dim diminished the power of Jewish organizations such as the Jewish Military Union and the Jewish Combat Organization. These troops were also responsible for the deaths of 21,000 Jews and 36,000 more were taken to Jewish extermination camps. Or concentration camps. This sent a shockwave across the Jewish community and is remembered by many as one of the darkest days for Jews. The killings by the Nazis did not go without some resistance, though, as many ghettos in modern-day Poland had uprisings of their own. These ghettos were communities in large cities. Most of these ghettos had a large Jewish population. Warsaw, Poland's largest city, had the greatest of these rebellions. This rebellion was known as the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, or WGU, being participated by up to 400,000 people. Ghettos were also areas of cities that were designed somewhat by the Nazi government to suppress individuals of certain groups, such as Jews and Roma. Many groups were involved in organizing this uprising, but the largest ones were the Jewish Combat Organization, or ZOB, the Jewish Military Union, the, or the ZZW, the Polish Home Army, or the AK, and the Polish People's Guard, or GL. These were made by Jewish people and the Polish government. The Jewish Combat Organization was mostly led by five people, Yitzhak Zuckerman, Zivia Lubetkin, and Madek Edelman, who survived into old age, Mordecai and Yellowix, who died by suicide, and Mori Orzek, who was charged with capital punishment. Other resistance military groups also had leaders involved, including the Jewish military unions Powell Frankiel, Leon Rodal, and David Awinski, the former two being killed at the scene, and the Polish Home Army's Henryk Iwanski. The Nazis, on the other hand, were led by Ferdinand von Samern Frankeneg, Jurgen Stroop, Arpad Wingen, and Lug. Big Han. These Jewish and Polish groups came together to stop the Nazis due to their re reluctance to acknowledge any kind of Polish government and the consistent mistreatment of Jews under the Nazi-controlled government, which advocated for the blaming of all of Germany's problems on Jews. After the events leading up to the rebellion on April 19, 1943, it was finally time for the civilians to take a stand. The Jews threw various projectiles at the Nazi police upon their arrival to the ghetto, destroying two of their war vehicles and killing 59 of their soldiers. Soon, Jürgen Stroop, a Nazi general, called for the use of bombing from aircraft in order to stop resistance. After a few days of fighting, on April 22nd, the Nazi forces resorted to burning Jewish houses all around the ghetto with flamethrowers, a move that would lead to a Jewish defeat. Simha Rodem, a survivor of both the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising and the Holocaust is quoted as saying that we knew that this spelled the end for us regarding the flamethrowers, and that everything we had been told was the truth, and that remaining in the ghetto simply meant being burned alive. But despite what the Germans were doing, most of our fighting force was still alive. Later, Josef Seni, a Polish commander, unsuccessfully tried to breach the walls of the ghetto. The fire started by the Nazis killed so many of the Jewish combat organization's members that on the 29th of April, the few remaining fighters escaped the ghetto. Other Jews hid in the sewers located under their home in order to hide from the Nazis and flames above them, but sometimes the Nazis would throw smoke bombs into the sewers, forcing many Jews to leave. On May 8th, tragedy struck the existing Jewish forces when the Nazis discovered the Jewish military union's base. Upon this discovery, Members present at the base committed mass suicide, including Mordecai and Yellowix. On the 16th of May, Stroop destroyed the Great Synagogue of Warsaw, essentially ending all combat from then on. In total, almost 21,000 Jews were taken by Nazi forces at the Warsaw Ghetto, 
and a further 36,000 were taken to the Nazi-controlled Jewish extermination camps. Both of these were huge amounts of people that history will not should ever forget. The uprisings were found throughout Poland, and when news broke out about the Holocaust to the outside world, Americans and other groups became outraged that the Nazi-controlled government of Germany. The obvious genocides and cruelty on display from Hitler's regime gained further awareness worldwide as a result of rebellions like these, which was one of the most large and impactful of the uprisings. The WGU, or Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, created ripples throughout Hitler's plans, eventually creating waves that would lead the man and his government to sink in the face of an American attack, making its impact stretch far beyond the city of Warsaw.